welcome to the Journey Shake Cam. Well, today's warm up, we have completed light turn configurations and then a lot of different questions, a variety of questions of things that we learned yesterday. It's a good review. Well, please do the best you can and we'll discuss them in a moment. In number one, we are determining the complete electron configurations of a variety of different elements. Well, I always need to write my diagonal rule because I can't remember the order that they go in. So I write the first energy level only has an s orbital with a maximum of two electrons. The second energy level has the s and the p, and there are three p orbitals, each having two electrons, giving me a maximum of six. The third energy level has the s, the p, and then the d orbitals. Well, there are five d orbitals, and every orbital can only contain two electrons, giving me a maximum of 10. The fourth energy level has the s, the p, the d, and then the f orbitals. Well, there are seven f orbitals, and that's why I can only have a maximum of 14 electrons to fill those f orbitals. The fifth, the sixth, and the seventh energy levels follow the same pattern. And it's very easy to write the energy levels and then draw in the diagonal line. Through the first orbital, the second orbital, and after that, the diagonals will follow the pattern and help to get the correct number of electrons. Well, bromine, bromine is atomic number 35. It has 35 protons and 35 electrons in the neutral atom. I follow the diagonal rule. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d10, and 4p5. And I see that bromine is on the fourth energy level. And I add these numbers up and I get 35. 2, 4, 10, 12, 18, 20, 35. Arsenic is atomic number 33. It has 33 protons as well as 33 electrons in the neutral atom. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d10, and 4p3. And I add these numbers up. 2, 4, 10, 12, 18, 20, 33. I just keep going until I get to the number of electrons that I need. Well, iodine is a big number, 53. Well, I follow my diagonal rule and I never go wrong. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d10, 4p6, 5s2, 4d10, and 5p5. And I add those numbers up, I get 53. 2, 4, 10, 12, 18, 20, 36, 38, 48, and 5 is 53. And then finally I have argon. Atomic number 18, 18 protons, 18 electrons. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, and 3p6. 2, 4, 10, 12, and 18 electrons for argon. And that's how you do number one. In number two, we are asked a variety of questions. And I'm not going to go in the same order that it was given in the question because it's easier for me to show you some of the answers by looking first at the ending electron configurations. That's the first thing I'm going to do. Well, bromine, when we look at the ending electron configuration, we use the highest energy level, which would be the fourth energy level. And that would be S2P5. Well, then I know how many dots it will have. The S and the P is in Paul electrons. Well, two plus five is seven, and therefore bromine has seven dots. Its oxidation number is minus one, or negative one. And it is a non-metal. Arsenic has an ending electron configuration of S2 and P3. I do not count lower energy levels. The outermost electrons are in the highest energy level given in the complete electron configuration. Well, this shows me that I'm going to have five dots. Therefore, arsenic has five dots. 
Now it's important to remember that it's like the element symbols are in a box. We do not put all the dots in a line outside. We put them around so that they're available for bonding. And the charge for the arsenic or the oxidation number would be minus three. And it is a non-metal. Then iodine has an ending electron configuration of S2P5. It has seven dots. It has an oxidation number of minus one, or a charge of minus one. And it also is a non-metal. Argon here has S2P6. And therefore, it has an octet. It has eight dots. And it has a charge or an oxidation number of zero. And it also is a non-metal. And this brings up an important point. Just because they're all non-metals does not mean that there's something wrong. Sometimes it just works out that way. So if you know the information, you can't be tricked by saying, hmm, maybe there's a metal in there and I'm missing it. No, they're all non-metals. It's very important when doing the warm-ups to try to do the best that you can, and it is a learning process. And that's why we go over it, to make sure we get the right answers. Well, now we have a quiz to take. You are going to be given 25 of those 50 elements, and each one is worth four points. And two of those four points are for spelling. You can spell it correctly. I'm sure that you will do well. Well, I wish you all the best, and I can't wait to see you tomorrow. Bye!